A clearer and darker picture is emerging of a murder suspect at the center of a cross-country manhunt. These photos of Briar Schmigelski sent to CBC by a fellow online gamer show the teen dressed in camo with a Nazi symbol on display. He's a much different image than the boy people here knew in person. Uh, he was a nice kid, very quiet. Lisa Lucas lives a few doors down from Schmigelski's grandmother, where he often stayed as a child. Her son Rylan became quick friends with Schmigelski. The two played together for years, but eventually grew apart. Rylan just said he just he just gave off a weird kind of a vibe. He just after a while just started making people feel uncomfortable. She says her son became concerned with Schmigelski's love for violent video games. He would mention things about like if this was real, you know, like when they're playing video games, like could you imagine if this was real kind of a thing? So and he'd get a little too excited about it, I guess. Others who knew Schmigelski more recently describe him as an outsider. There, he was definitely not the average guy and he's a little bit weird. Mathis Mueller met Schmigelski at a skate park a few months ago. The two stayed in touch on Facebook. In April, Schmigelski sent him this message asking him if he wanted to meet up to talk about politics. He's talking, having, saying stuff like he wanted to start like a militia or something like that and, uh, you know, do some gun shooting. Schmigelski's father said he'd asked for an airsoft gun, which shoots plastic bullets. He bought it for him and says his son and his friends would battle each other in the woods. As for Cam's father, Keith McLeod, he's not ready to be interviewed yet, but I spoke with him by phone and he says he can't even make it through a sentence without breaking down. And he sent us this statement instead. To all the people who truly care, I'm sitting at home worrying about my son. Cam is a kind, considerate, caring young man and has always been concerned about other people's feelings. As we try to wrap our heads around what is happening, we hope that Cam will come home to us safely so we can all get to the bottom of this story. A plea for answers that are tough to come by, but desperately needed. Tanya Fletcher, CBC News, Port Alberni. As Tanya mentioned, some of the photos of Schmigelski came from people he gamed with online. So let's bring in Katie Nicholson. Uh, Katie, you spoke to some of those fellow gamers today in detail. Yeah, Briar Schmigelski and Cam McLeod had several online gaming accounts. There are a number of websites where you can play video games and communicate with other gamers. So one gamer we spoke with today told us Schmigelski sent these pictures to him last year during one of almost a dozen conversations. He said Schmigelski was constantly wanting to talk about what the Nazi regime did right and what it did wrong. And he said he talked about his airsoft rifle. That's a replica gun used in some shooting sports. And he remembers cautioning Schmigelski not to kill anyone, but at the time, he didn't think it was a serious threat. It was also uncomfortable that the gamer stopped communicating with him. Now, he told me now that Schmigelski is on the run, he's concerned for his safety, which is why we're not revealing his name. Schmigelski's social media shows a fascination with Russia. He apparently began learning the language in 2015. One gamer told us he adopted a, a heavy Russian accent when they chatted. And he belongs to some pro-Putin and pro-Trump groups. Now, people's actual lives can be very different from their online lives, but these are at least, at the very least, some indications of Schmigelski's interests. As for Cam McLeod, his social media presence is pretty sparse. Uh, his privacy settings locked down. But one gamer did tell us he's shy and cheerful, a normal teenager. Ian? All right, Katie, thank you. You're welcome. As they remain at large, police are asking anyone who sees the pair not to engage with them. Joining with the RCMP, Ontario Provincial Police also putting out a warning to people in the northwest of that province. Both McLeod and Schmigelski are tall, 6'4". Both had brown hair when they were last seen, though they may have tried to change their appearances. For police, this case presents all kinds of challenges, from the vastness of the country to the remote area the suspects were last tied to. Sherry benson Podolchuk was a Manitoba RCMP officer for 20 years and is familiar with the area around Gillam. So thank you very much for joining us this evening. Explain for us the challenges facing the RCMP tonight on this search. Thank you, Ian. Yes, the, the challenges right now are the, is the terrain. Uh, it's bushy, it's, there's bushes up there. It, the, the terrain is, they don't have gravel roads. There's no place to turn off and get a cup of coffee. It's thick bush, it's rough, it's got muskeg uh, ground surface. So, and like oodles of bugs and mosquitoes and black flies. So just uh, spending an hour out there is enough to go, make you go crazy. Plus the heat and then the anxiety of wondering what you're gonna find around the next corner. You don't don't know if the suspects are hiding you don't know anything about that so the police have a real challenging time in trying to locate the suspects as well as maintaining their own safety 
And let's talk a little bit about the danger here. You know, the RCMP officers know that some of the most dangerous places are, are rural encounters. Mm -hmm. How do you do a search like this when the people you're looking for are accused or at least suspected in, in some pretty violent crimes? Well, your anxiety level goes up, of course, and they're professionals. They will do a, they will do a job. They will call in the resources uh, from different detachments. They'll sweep er as much as they can. Like I said, up there, there's only one road in and one road out. So if, if your traffic will be limited on, on of trying to find them that way, it will be more like they're, uh, they're on the run and they're either hiding someone with, uh, with hiding out there with somebody or in the bush, or at some point they've managed to uh, get a ride outside of the community. But we, we, that's something they don't know. So they have to do everything they possibly can to sweep the area and make sure that they're not, they're not leaving before they find the suspects or confirm that they are not there. All right. Well, thank you very much for your insights tonight. Thank you.